Make no mistake, missed deadlines and nasty negotiators do have the power to hit your portfolio. Let me tell you this. Historically, S&P 500 companies, many of which are in your portfolio, derive 40% of their revenues from outside the U.S. That's slightly lower from 2015, but, but when you break it through and you talk about things like Asia and Mexico and China, the trade kerfuffles bring that number even lower hurting earnings of the stocks you own. President Obama's former Undersecretary of Commerce for International Trade, Stefan Selig, you called it. You said we would not hit the deadline for NAFTA, but let's start with this. Of Canada, Mexico, and China, which one matters most to people's portfolios watching? I think, Liz, in the near term, it's um, NAFTA. And it's NAFTA because Canada and Mexico are fundamental allies. They are market economies. And we actually have a pathway to a modernized agreement that should be attainable. The China issues are much more difficult. They're going to take much more time. And so I would be much more focused on a successful NAFTA outcome, which sadly is unlikely to happen in the immediate term. OK. There was a soft deadline. And Paul Ryan had said, if we don't get it done by today, that does not give us enough time to, to look at it and vote upon it this year. Because of, because of Trade Promotion Authority, TPP, which allows a bill to go to Congress without having amendments attached to it, and also because of the Mexican elections, which are coming up on July 1st. So what the combination this? of those two things, I'm fearful that if we miss this deadline, it's at earliest going to be a year-end event with what is likely to be a changed Mexican administration, which is less likely to be uh, amenable to a deal. Let me get to China. Are we using a blunt instrument, or are we using using a more surgical approach and which one is more appropriate because right now I just heard from the president he bluntly said they've ripped us off for years but of course we're looking at a, a huge trading partner here well we keep on coming back to measuring um, our success with our trade deficit which is not something that governments can control which is made up from fundamental macroeconomic factors and like we don't consumer. have one in Canada we don't have a deficit with Canada except with energy I think well, we have we actually have a surplus because of yeah. our services surplus. So we tend to be very focused on our goods um, deficits and goods sur and surpluses, and not take into consideration our services um, uh, trade balance. And so um, this is something that um, is going to continue to be an issue. But I think the president is fundamentally focused on the wrong thing, which is this metric of our bilateral trade deficit with countries, China included, as opposed to focusing on the rules of the road to allow American companies access to those markets on a level playing field. Well, at some point, we do need that level playing field, and people don't see it right and, now. And good for him to be focusing on it, and good for him to be getting tough. My fear is that we're just fundamentally using the wrong metric to um, assess our success on this topic. Stefan Selig, thank you.